Okay. Welcome back. Yesterday I shot a, uh, a video of, um, of me making a bottom board, a screen bottom board for, uh, for a Langstroth Hive. And I spent pretty much the full day doing it. I'm still learning my camera, Canon 60D. And I bought this as much for video as for still photography because I plan on using it this summer uh, to conduct some interviews as I'm traveling uh, through uh, Croatia, Montenegro, Albania, and Greece, and then to Turkey. And so I want to get the use of this down as well as the audio. I'm recording through a Zoom H2 directly into the camera and I'm using Magic Lantern as software on my camera so I can watch the audio level as I talk. I've got the white balance right now set, set to fluorescent because that's the uh, lighting I have here in my workshop. And uh, But anyway, yesterday I shot at a, uh, at a 60 frame per second um, at a wide, different format and I still haven't figured out how to upload it. So today I'm shooting at a 640 by 480 which should be directly uploadable to uh, YouTube. So we'll see how this one works out today. Well today's project is a uh, is a solar wax melter. I'm a beekeeper and uh, I use top bar hives and that means you basically cut off all the honeycomb and crush it up and strain the honey out and what you have left over is the beeswax and then still some honey that's mixed in with the beeswax that doesn't strain out easily. Now you can use that honey when you heat it up as for cooking or for other purposes or just feed it back to the bees which is probably what I'll do. But uh, in the past I've just heated it up on the stove. I wanted to try making a solar wax melter and I got some plans online and I've seen one of the uh, members of our bee club come down and show his. This is the uh, plans that I've got online and I got them from a website called uh, www.beesource.com that's b-e-e-s-o-u-r-c-e dot com it's pretty straightforward there's not a heck of a lot to a solar uh, wax melder. You just have to have hot enough days and a way to keep the heat in a confined space. What I had to buy uh, that I didn't have laying around the shop here, I always try to use my spare leftover parts and you can see I've got a couple pieces here just sort of holding the, this, this shape together. I bought a bread pan for about six dollars from uh, Smith Marketplace and then I bought a uh, another pan and this will be the pan that'll that'll hold the wax as it melts and it'll drain into here after going through a couple of screens and I'll just uh, work on this today this is a 2 by 12 I'm pretty much making my own design even though that had some uh, some plans I'm gonna pretty much make my own design and uh, and I decided to make it to match the size of the plexiglass that I bought. This is the plexiglass I bought at Home Depot. It was about eight dollars and fifty cents for this sheet. This sheet is 18 inches by 24 inches so I decided to make the frame that size. You can see I cut some slots and this is just basically the width of a saw blade so I didn't have to put a dado in or anything but I put I cut the slots on all four corners on each of them see if you can see it I'll bring it closer um, you can see some of the, the widths and the uh, are vary on the slots I decided I had to go a deeper width to make it easier to get the uh, glass in and out. So this, when it's all done, it'll sit up. These are cut at 
15 degree angles so it'll sit up about 15 degrees and drain about like that. That's, uh, that's 15 degrees right there so it'll be a gradual slope down to it. So what I'm going to do right now is is go ahead and and measure up about how far I need to make my my legs and I'll just keep the legs permanently attached to the back. Actually, no, what I'm going to do right now is build a shelf. It's a tough decision what to do right now. I'm going to ponder this a second and turn off the camera and think about it because it does call for uh, insulating the entire uh, interior chambers of it. I don't know if I want to put the insulation on first and then mount my boards to the insulation which would be simpler to do uh, or if I want to uh, mount the boards and then cut the insulation around it. I think I'm going to put the insulation on here, here, and here before I do anything else. So I'm going to go get some old uh, boards that I have for insulation and go from there. Let's figure out how thick I can go because I've got several boards out there. Some are two inch thick insulation, some are one and a half inch. So it looks to me like I've got room for a total of uh, about five inches of insulation, but I think I'll just go with one inch board insulation. We'll get that and we'll see where we go from here. You can see I'm listening to my iPod while I'm doing this. I do that a lot while I'm working. I found this uh, roof insulation. As I was wandering around one day, I just picked up a few scraps. I have to admit I'm a bit of a scrounger. This uh, looks like it'll be perfect for what I'm using it for. It looks like it's about maybe a 5 8 inch thick, maybe half inch. Uh, so I will cut the pieces to fit and we'll go from there. Looks like I got this cut. I'm going to be short the piece for this side, but I've got other uh, parts out there. Now it calls for, it calls for, uh, it calls for coloring it black. But I like this reflecting uh, material here, and I may just go ahead and leave it this color. Uh, we'll, sh we'll try it. I can always paint it black later on and see how it works. Now, I probably need to put uh, my, my uh, tray in now. So I will mount some some cleats and uh, some crossbars and uh, put that in. So we'll see how that works. Recording. Okay. So. I thought and thought and thought what would be the best way to uh, support this and I came up with this solution right here. Basically I'm going to toenail these boards in here. There's a tight friction fit right now. There's an app for an iPhone called a Level which uh, is nice and handy in tight spots like this. So I'm going to level across there, and I already have already done it, so that's nice and level. And I will level across there, and I'll check the level of my workbench, and that's level. And I will check both sides for level. Looks like that side can come up just a touch. A little more. side go down a little bit. One guy side goes up, the other goes down. Looks like it go down a little more. Good 
Good. Good. I don't know why this is critical. You can always remelt the wax, but you may as well make it look good. All right. So that's a handy little app to have. It's free. It's just a, a level app. Now I put some uh, 18 gauge one and a half inch nails in my finish nailer and I'm just going to toenail that in. Not particularly good. Good. You're poking up a little bit. Recheck my level. I saw I miss I moved a I moved a little bit. So let's recheck my level here. I'm going to first concentrate on getting this front bar level. Okay, good. So I'm going to hold my finger underneath there. Okay. That's relatively solid. Remember, this doesn't have that much weight on it. So it does not need to be that strong. And I will try to put another nail through from both sides if I can line it up accurately enough. Now let's do the back one. Check my level again. Close enough. Okay. Back one. That looks good. Good enough. Get that out of the way. Okay, check my level across here, good, check my front and back clearance, good. I got a jam. I'm going to use a staple instead here. So I don't have to worry about clearing out the jam. Toe nailing is sometimes difficult. I don't think my no oh my I 
staples weren't long enough. I've got to change the longer staples. Try one more time here. There we go. That's looking better. That's good. It wouldn't do on my boat, but for something as crude and rustic as this, all it needs to be is functional. It doesn't have to be pretty. All right, now for this. This is going to be a couple cleats coming down here and then a couple cross braces going across here. So. I think what I'll do is, that's the lowest I want it, I'll just measure up from there. Be pretty easy to do. I'll put my first cleat parallel to that and then uh, come up. That'll work easy. So, I thought about this. Whenever you start a project, unless you have very detailed plans, it's always a discovery process. So this is how the uh, final project will look. I'll put a front board on here. Now the plans off the, uh, off the website show a nice bar, a nice door that you can open up and pull out this and so forth. That's more work than I want to do. This will work well. So what I'm going to do is I will go ahead and finish nailing these side cleats on here. And then I'll nail this back board here to hold it. This front board, I'm going to put a couple little blocks on each side. But I'm not going to to nail down this front cleat permanently because I think the simplest way to uh, empty the beeswax out of here is going to be take out the lid or the, uh, the glass make sure it still fits all right All right, just take out the glass. Take this out. Take this out and take the beeswax out. Why make it more difficult than it needs to be? You can see I put uh, some uh, aluminized duct tape around all the seams. And I had actually planned on doing a little more elaborate box, but I think that this will work just fine. I've got this glass a little tight. That's okay. It looks like it's snug up on the insulation all the way around. And um, I may put a little knob on here or just a cleat on here so I can pull it, so I can grab it. That would be a simple process to do. So it will be an easy way to open it up and do it. Now, this bottom, this bottom uh, collector bread box, 
I'm going to put a little bit of this screen over it for a strainer. Okay, and then on this upper box, that'll be the fine strainer. Then on the upper box, I will take some of that eighth inch screen, and I've got a piece sitting around here somewhere that I cut yesterday that's just about the right size. But anyway, I'll find it, but for illustration purposes, I will put this in here before, it, before the wax really melts. So this will be a rough strainer, the fine screen will be a fine strainer, and uh, I'll have to cut some holes in the bottom of this board. I'll probably do it with a little Dremel cutting tool. Just cut a slot out of that. You'll see that in a few minutes. Okay, I think this will be the last of the uh, the uh, episode. Uh, we're pretty much done now. I'll show you what I've done. I still need to do a couple minor things, but for, the, for all practical purposes, we're done here. You can see I put an end board on here. And I sealed up all the uh, corners with uh, tape. I'll lift it up so you can see it a little better. This is uh, the screen I will put over the top so the beeswax will melt, go down through the eighth inch holes, and then uh, it'll go into this pan and there will be another finer screen that, uh, that it has to go through to get through that. I will paint the entire outside black. Um, you can see I uh, found another different type of insulation for the, uh, for the uh, last board here. That's all done. So this is it. It's uh, for all practical purposes done. A couple minor things to do. I'll cut off these so it uh, matches up. And let's uh, put the glass in. See how well it fits. I still haven't done this. I may still need to do a little bit of trimming on on this. And. Oh, that looks good. That looks good. I don't have to do anything on that. I'll peel off the uh, I'll peel off the protective cover on that when I'm all done. And I may or may not put a handle on it. I think I'd rather not, but it does seem to be it's a snug enough fit that it may it may be smart just to put. A, uh, a cleat there so I can grab it and pull it up. In fact, I think I will do that. But there you go. Paint it black. Try it out. In the summer when it's 100 degrees in the city here, ah, I definitely need to put a, uh, a handle on this. Because it's a nice snug fit. Uh, there we go. Once I get it started, then I can take it out. There we go. Hope you enjoyed that. All right, the audio is not going to be very good because I'm just using the uh, camera microphone right now. But this is a completed project. I painted the outside black. I sort of painted a little bit of the inside black, but I wanted to test it out with just a uh, silver reflection working. I threw some uh, caps in about an hour and a about an hour and a half ago. It's 10:30 right now in the morning. I see I'm getting quite a bit of um, the honey that wasn't extracted through my normal straining process is falling out right now. And uh, 
Let's see if we can get some of it here. I'm not sure if it's focusing or not. Let's put it on autofocus. And uh, I think I won't. Anyway, that's that. I'll uh, come back this afternoon in about five hours, and my guess is all of that will be melted and in, uh, into the uh, into the bread pan. Hope you enjoyed the project. All right, it looks like it worked pretty well. This is the uh, wax that came off. Underneath there's going to be a bunch of honey that's uh, that leaked off as well. I'm going to put that in the refrigerator and uh, and then drain off the honey, and then I'll probably remelt that wax one more time, but. Uh, you can see where it cooled down. The last little bit of wax didn't get through, so that'll be there for the next the next time I throw some more wax in there. So, it works well. I thought I was done with this project, but as I was thinking last night, something came to mind, and I thought I'd share that with you. A few years ago, I was uh, I'd written a screenplay, and I decided that the only way to get it sold was to go meet people in the in the business in the uh, film industry so I went to Sundance and I uh, heard about this uh, exclusive brunch that they had over at uh, Sundance Ski Resort called the Sundance uh, Sundance Brunch or the Filmmakers Brunch so I crashed it with a buddy of mine and we got there early and we it was open seating so we went and sat up at the very front uh, right in front of the podium and I picked the, the uh, spot on the table, these were round tables, so it was directly looking at the podium. So it, we we sat there and as day, time went on uh, the people that came and sat next to us were the uh, the board of directors of the Sundance Institute. The man sitting next to me uh, was a very wealthy high-powered individual who made who worked for a company or was the owner of the company that made factories around the world for different companies. He was in uh, the factory construction business. We got to talking and he said that uh, every time he made a factory in Russia or China or somewhere like that, that immediately the, uh, the, the plans for that construction would be copied and it would appear somewhere else. The same factory would appear somewhere else. And I made the comment, I said, that really doesn't matter though because you learned as much by building that factory uh, as as you could have and they didn't learn the lessons that you learned and he made the comment that that was absolutely correct that every time you build something you realize something about what you built that you would improve the next time and so while you may be able to copy an idea you can't copy the knowledge that's gained from from actually doing something so these are the mistakes we made with this project and it came to me after the first melting of the wax. First of all you'll see that the insulation that I put in here is pulling out from the sides. It's warped and uh, you can see it on this side but you can't really you see it right there. So I probably use a different insulation, maybe just a regular fiberglass insulation that is not hard and will uh, will not warp, or maybe this polyethylene foam down here. The second thing, and the, probably the most important thing, is the depth of this it needs to be higher, because you can see that I'm really limited by the amount of wax that I can put in here. So if I were to build this project over again, I would build it higher, probably at least another four inches higher. Now you, this is a 2 by 10 scraps that I used for the sides here. And, uh, and I'd like to get it higher. So the next time what I might do is just use a 2 by 10 and just add another 2 by 4 on top of that. Just join them together with some cleats and make it that way. So if you're doing this project, you might consider that. The depth on this, by the time you get this high enough for it to drain into the bread pan, doesn't give you much room for putting the wax on here. 
So I wanted to add this last little uh, this last little bit to this video before I published it to give you my ideas on how to improve what I just did. I'm not going to build a new one, but uh, if I did, if I were starting a new project, I'd definitely add those improvements to it. So thanks. Appreciate you watching.